the hand sonic has really helped me become a hand percussionist. I primarily play drum set. I have had some training on congas, cajon, different things like that, and I'm decent, but this has made me better. Um, I'm able to use conga in the studio. A lot of times I'm even not trying to put anybody out of work, but I've actually been able to cover all bases, go in, lay some V-drum tracks down, and then it's like, oh, we want some congas or some shaker. I have it. And I don't have to bring like a, a a big truck full of different things. Basically, this is your truck full of instruments. Everything ranging from cajones to what you wouldn't even Asian gongs. I mean, imagine that in a truck. You're all, uh, I just gotta load up my Asian gongs. You're not gonna do it. I wouldn't. And I'm actually able to use my fingers and do common patterns that I would on the drum set, but make some things come to life as a percussionist. And I imagine for my friends that are percussionists, it's just like a whole world of new sounds and creativity. Um, and as well, I've done gigs where I've actually played uh, with a DJ and just used the hand sonic, hooking up a KD-7 um, and an FD-8 with it and, and becoming kind of the live techno drummer right there. And not to mention utilizing the D-beam, tuning muffling effects. This, it's just, this just brings your whole playing to a whole other level. So, digging it. I've had a... Huge, I've had huge success with the Hand Sonic 10, bringing it in to Project Studios just on its own. I've laid drum tracks down with it, with the in, uh, internal drum set sounds, and then immediately did two more passes with other percussion, shaker, tambourine, or cajon, or conga parts, and gone out the door. And I have had producers and engineers say, hey, can you come over for a quick 15-minute song? And boom, I'm literally out the door with this in the stand, power, supply and the two pedals, plug it in, volume up, killer sound, and done with like, you know, I can do demo sessions in five tunes within an hour or even faster. And it's really not because I'm a wizard, it's because this thing's making me a wizard. So I suggest it for uh, the arsenal of any drummer that's serious about playing or just wants to have fun, but it's really, really, really come in handy for uh, both live. And the other application is uh, with a live steel drum band. I know this has steel drums in it, but I've sat back in the back of a small pool area and played with a steel uh, pan band playing the drum set parts here. Total portability, and it, uh, what, it takes me two seconds to break it down and go home? It's all about breaking it down <laughs> and going home. So, it's really successful with this thing. It's awesome. Well, when I first saw the Hand Sonic, I went through a bunch of sounds that were in it, you know, just testing it in the, in, in, in the store. It was pretty amazing, all the, all the amazing sounds that I had in there. And the first thing that came to my mind it was like, well, you know, I know I'm going to have certain gigs where I, no one is paying for the big cartridge truck to have all the gear that I got to take to the session or whatever. And here's could be a solution where, you know, there's, there's a, a small package of r real percussion that I'll take. And then this thing will solve the problems of like, hey, you got like uh, some tablas? Oh, gee, you know. Well, that didn't fit in my car, but you got any ooze? Dang it, I can only get a pair of congas in, a, you know, in my car. I got a small car, so. What are some of my regular, my favorite patches? Well, you know, I like... Um, some of the djembe patch is really cool. You dig? I have all these uh, different uh, versions of sounds, you know? Open and the slap. So I basically got, you know, if, if I was playing a real djembe, the same kind of thing. When you play in a huge, in a big stadium, everything's amplified. So I'm gonna take a little cabaza. Okay, you know, it might be cool, you know. But I'm pretty sure that if I play the cabaza on this thing, it's gonna be heard. And I like my parts that I plan to be heard. That's the reason why I'm there. The cajon patch is really good. You can play bulerias. Where's one? One. I mean, I'm a conga player, so. And 
I can play them ball at the same time. <laughs> First of all, the hand sonic was a breakthrough instrument because up until now, I had been using all drum-based electronic percussion instruments. This is, for, this is like the first thing out there that is catering to me as a percussionist, as a hand percussionist. There's a multitude of sounds that I could trigger and that really gives me the flexibility that, you know, if I can't get to a triangle or, a, or pick up two clave to hit together, you know, because I'm, my right hand's playing a shaker, you know, I could get, I, my right foot could, could trigger a wind chime run and I could play a clave pattern with my left hand. No problem, you know. Playing in a live situation, this gives me the flexibility I need. In the studio, you know, all of a sudden, I don't have to bring a ton of cases of gear. I just need this and my regular rig. And then if the producer wants any off-the-wall sound, I got it. Not a problem at all. The Hansonic 10 is great because they've added the feature of the metronome, and this is perfect for the hotel room on the road because all of a sudden now I could use it as a practice pad with sticks or I can go through and, and uh, plug it straight into my computer and you know jot down ideas, whether it be uh, some loops based stuff uh, with percussion sounds or drum set sounds or whatever. Both the Hansonic 10 and the 15 have been breakthrough instruments for me, just as uh, both a recording studio musician as well as a live and on the road guy. For live, it's changed my playing. Yeah, I don't have to haul as much acoustic gear. I don't have to depend on sound men to get all my gear covered. I love the balaphone all the time. I use that a lot. The Udu is probably the most useful for me in, in all the applications because you can never get a good live sound on an Udu. You don't you take the mi the microphones have to be just right and they got to be really hot. So I've used the Udu uh, probably more than any others. And all the frame drums like this frame drum patch because you can never get enough volume on a real frame drum in a live situation especially. Also when I did, uh, I played a couple live shows with it and I was playing Doombeck and Congas here, but all of a sudden to get the Doombeck and the Congas mic'd uh, and to get the frame drum or the ricks or the Udus loud as the Congas or the Bongos, never work. You could never have like 25 mics. So all of a sudden you just mic the Congas or Bongos or Timbales and then all the other more ethnic exotic drums are here for me. It's how I've used it the most. I have a band in a quartet, and this is the only drum where I just, I might add a real snare and a real hi-hat, but I, the whole band is based on the hand sonic with bass, guitar, and vocals. So this for me is a really great live gigs because every tune I go to pat, a different patch and the whole color of the band changes because all the patches I've tailored to different tunes in the band. That's what I love. And for recording, um, more and more TV and film is becomes, you know, is happening in basements and in home in home studios. So there's less and less cartridge budgets, less and less space for all the big acoustic drums. Some composers I've been working for want a real player to actually play with their feel and their touch and their sensitivity to rhythm and, and, and their sense of composition and arranging almost to how the drums fit together but they just want, they might want to change the sounds later, so they might just want in, uh, MIDI information. Uh, another composer, I, I made some patches for him and dumped them from my hand sonic to his hand sonic so I can go over to his house and record my stuff that I've altered into his home studio. So that's been a great change to get my sounds into his film, yet not moving anything, just showing up. <laughs> Yeah, I've recently worked for a composer who says, Brad, I need some sounds that I, but I don't want any really traditional percussion sounds. I want to get like, I want some kind of ethnic feel or world try drumming, but I don't exactly want, want, want a director of a movie or a producer to say, that sounds too Indian, that sounds too African. So I'll take an African djembe patch in here and try to alter it, change the decay, make, maybe crank the pitch way up on a surdo crank the pitch way low on a bongo. So then, then all of a sudden, you can bring to a composer a fresher sound of what a bongo or a djembe or a surdo is because I've tweaked it inside the hand sonic. So I have gotten a few requests 
to give me something new, and so I'll either show up with this, or if I'm lucky, uh, some of the composers have them. And I'll show up to his house and say, I know this conga sound on this patch, I'm gonna go tweak it. So we really won't sound exactly like a conga. It's some, hopefully somewhere in the mystery land of a, of a new type of hand drum, you know? This is, this is like, a, like very similar to like a tar, a really high frame drum. And, and taking this frame drum, and if we go here, we can do it much faster, of course. Now we have a drum that's nothing like any existing drum. Sort of maybe like some kind of metal can, but instead of me hauling 30 of my metal found objects to somebody's house, now I got some sort of strange metallic frame that I can apply my frame drum technique to. And so it's been extremely useful for that kind of application, especially when people are looking for a new sound because we're starting with samples, but the cool part is now we can tweak them all and invent new sounds. And it's simple, which I, I need. <laughs> and I'm just starting to scratch the surface with the SPDS, because uh, I haven't sampled enough yet, but I'm gonna be putting more and more into there of my personalized drums. You know, even metal pots and things that I collect, I'm gonna put in there so I won't be hauling six trunks to every kid. <laughs> 